Hello everyone, Renee here. Welcome to another Pick a Card reading. This reading is for creative souls. Whether you're an artist or a musician, a makeup artist in theater, you knit or landscape design, or you work with wood, or you work with metal, cooking, baking, jewelry design, inventors, interior design, fashion, the list goes on and on and on. You are a creative soul. This reading is for you. This reading might help to inspire you. It may confirm a few things for you. It might answer a few questions. We're going to really focus on the colors, the images. I want you to get inspired by this reading. All you have to do to start is choose one of these three cards. They're all from a different tarot deck. And the correlating reading will be for you. So which card do you feel drawn to right now? Is it card number one, card number two, or card number three? Once you've made up your mind, you can look below at those timestamps and fast forward to your reading. As always, thanks so much for watching. Hello, group one. If you chose the first card, this is your reading. So let's see what your first card is. You got the Empress, which is all about tapping into that creative energy. It's about birthing something new creatively. It's about being creatively fertile. You know, you are a fertile vessel for creativity if you let it flow through you. It can flow through you, sometimes easily, sometimes not so much. But essentially, the Empress energy is coming through for you, Group 1. Let's draw a few more tarot cards. And then we're going to draw a bunch of Oracle cards from some great decks that help with creativity. So you have the Empress. You have the Chariot, Forward Movement and Motion. We have the Eight of Coins, hard work, being very determined to finish something. We have the Ace of Cups, something you love, something you're passionate about. And, you know, take a look at the images. Take a look at this image. It's got the cup, but it's got musical notes behind it. So maybe music is your thing. That's a possibility for some of you. And we have the Wheel of Fortune. So. When I see this image, it reminds me of, you know, the wheels of your mind turning, like all these things going through your mind, all these ideas going through your mind. And I feel that if you tap into your energy and hone in on one thing, that's probably going to help you to succeed. And with the Wheel of Fortune comes success from your creativity. And I have to remark on the cards drawn, all of these absolutely could have to do with creativity so I'm glad that all the cards in the tarot that we drew are relevant. You are creatively fertile, you're a creative vessel, you need to move forward with your ideas, you need to follow through with your ideas, you need to be passionate about the idea, and you need to maybe hone in on something specific and start from there is kind of what I'm getting. But you can take a look at all those images and maybe something in one of those images will inspire you, right? It's all about you. So let's draw some oracle cards. Whoops, these like flipped over. Let's shuffle these a little bit. They're really large, kind of hard to shuffle, but we will get there. All right, so for you, I drew this one farsightedness. Yes, keep your eye on the goal. As you persevere and work that is shown here in the Eight of uh, Coins or Pentacles, keep your eye on the prize, Group 1. Keep your eye on the far future. What do you want to manifest? What do you want to leave behind as your legacy, right? Um, place importance on your creativity. Let's draw you a few from the Creativity Oracle from Amy Zerner and Monty Farber. This deck is so awesome for creative people. Each card has a different image on it. 
and it's just it's so inspiring to draw a card a day I draw a card a day almost every day and I'll stare at the image and then I'll turn it over and read the keyword or message so let's draw two for you group one So first for you, we have this image. Take a long, hard look at this. What do you notice? What is it reminding you of? What does it ignite or inspire within you? And it is dream. Connect to your intuitive dream world of metaphors and symbols. So that might help some of you hone in on what you're, you're looking for, what, kind of answers you're wanting in regards to your creativity, right? Connect to your intuitive dream world of metaphors and symbols. So that is dream. And your next card looks like this. Take a long, hard look at that. It's very, very different, as you can see from the first card. And the message of this is resurrection. Reconsider a project or recall a person from the past to resurrect an idea. All right, resurrection. Now we are going to draw one of my Color Goddess casting cards for you, group one. And we'll take a look at the colors the messages, everything that's incorporated in the card, something within the imagery might inspire you. It is moss, breeding growth and reproduction. And as you can see, I incorporated um, the Empress card in the moss card. You have the Empress over here. So that's validation that you have a very high level of creativity you just have to manifest it hone in on an idea and manifest it right this is also the merging of the masculine and feminine so for creative you know for creativity as far as that goes i think this card has to do with what you do creatively and how you can make that a reality or maybe even make it a business maybe even make money from it the feminine the masculine right the masculine is more earthy down to earth and the feminine is more airy watery dreamlike so i feel like once you come up with this idea if you haven't had one already once you work on it finish it you show it to the world or you pitch it to whoever, a company, whatever, um, then you can start looking a little bit further at what you can do with it as far as finances go, right? Because there are ways to make money using your creativity. I feel that that's what this moss goddess is coming in to tell you, all right? That's what I feel psychically. Very good reading. Let's draw a final card for you from Art Oracles and see who pops up for you, Group 1. So for you, we have Michelangelo. No compromise is a good compromise. Blemished origins do not negate flawless conclusions. Become ill with unhealthy perfectionism. I love that for you. I love that for you, Group 1. So I hope that this reading helps to inspire you in some way and to think about, you know, maybe what your next step should be or next steps should be. But there is action, there is forward momentum. Once you focus, there is very, very hard work. So please be persistent. Don't let obstacles stop you. I will also note you have an ace here out of the top five and I've said it before there's only four aces out of the whole deck of 78 so to have any of the aces is a very good sign of success especially with the wheel of fortune especially with this card you can be successful with your creativity okay you just need to hone in on what your 
going to specialize in or what exactly you want to do with it, right? You might want to resurrect an old idea. You might want to pay attention to your dreams, pay attention to metaphors and symbols. Um, maybe research Michelangelo and his wonderful work that's very famous. You probably know some of his works. Tap into that empress energy and yeah, look far into the future and know that you can build something productive with your creativity group one. All right, bye. Hello group two, if you chose the second card, this is your reading. So let's see what your card is. It is the hanged man. So this card is kind of telling you that you might need to see things from a different perspective in order to answer your question or get past a creative block, right? So let's draw a few more tarot cards and then we're going to draw a bunch of oracle cards for you. So let's see what else you need to know about your creativity. So we also have for you the Five of Swords. We have the Hierophant. We have the Emperor. And we have the Nine of Wands. All right. So what I'm getting right away is building an empire. Building your empire with the Emperor and the Nine of Wands. You're on your way to building an empire, so to speak, with your creative genius, with your creative talents. Whether it's music or art or literature or whatever, doesn't matter. You're on your way. Maybe you're going to start a business or you have your own business and you're on your way to success. But there is a conflict happening here. Maybe you're undecided as to what to do next, okay? Um, or maybe there's challenges that you're meeting and you feel like you're not going to be able to persevere past these obstacles, whether they have to do with other people's opinions or lack of a partnership or support or um, lack of money or whatever it might be. What I'm seeing here is that there's more you need to learn about. You need to dig deeper into the situation. You might need to learn more about some type of skill. For example, if you want to build a business out of your creativity, let's say, for example, you're an artist. Well, you have to figure out how to do that. You have to figure out, you know, um, the website, get a website going, get on, you know, social media platforms, get advertising your art, um, put your art on different objects, you know, whether it's canvas or postcards or mugs or journals, if you're a painter or whatever, you have to do some learning before you get to this point. You will get to this point. You'll be very secure with your work, but you're going to have to learn a little extra before you get there. And there's some obstacles you're going to have to overcome. I would say you just be, be persistent, you know, persevere. You've got the talent. Something also, okay, part of the block here might be something that you need to change a little bit because the hanged man is all about, you know, he's upside down. So he's seeing something from a different perspective. There's a change happening within the hanged man. Maybe the change for you needs to be your perspective on something you've created or an idea. Maybe you're being a little bit too stubborn. I feel like you have to be a little bit more flexible. And there's a few things you need to learn before you build this empire from your talent. Okay, so let's draw some oracle cards now and see what we get for you, group two. So we have this one for you, discernment. Yes, it goes perfectly with that hanged man, having the power of discernment, discerning what is maybe attainable and what is not, a, not attainable. Maybe discerning what you are capable of and what you're not capable of. You know, some artists aren't very business savvy. 
Maybe you need to find, the Hierophant can mean finding a guru or getting some kind of advice or finding an advisor to help you. So it's all about discernment, discerning what will work, what won't work, who to trust, who to ask for help, when to ask for help, and all of those things. All right, so let's draw a few of the creativity oracle cards. One of my favorite decks by Amy Zerner, Monty Farber. There's a different image on every single card. And I'll draw a card a day and just stare at the image. And it's always inspiring. So for you, let's see, we'll cut it one more time. Okay, we still got a horse. Okay, here is your first image. Take a long look at it. Maybe it'll spark something. Play. Our work can and should take on the quality of play, for it is play that stimulates creativity. So maybe group two, you're being a little bit too serious. Maybe you need to just let loose, chill out a little bit, and just let your creativity flow. That's how it's supposed to happen anyway, right? I mean, yes, you have a lot of learning and planning to do, but at the end of the day, creativity is all about play, right? It's play that does create creativity. We can't create, <clears throat> excuse me, when we're stressed out. I mean, I'm a creator as well. And if I'm stressed out, my, my stuff, my creations are not as good. Sometimes they're not good at all. So make time for play. Here's your second card. Take a look at this imagery. And it is enchantment. We are enchanted when the muses sing the art spirit into us. Play, become enchanted, group two. Allow the magic of creativity to flow through you again, right? Because that's kind of how it all began, isn't it? So let's draw a color goddess casting card for you, group two. And so for you, we have magenta, of course. Different, diverse, unusual. This is all about letting your freak flag fly, letting your colors show, your true colors show, showing your work, honoring the diversity within yourself and within everyone and everything around us allowing yourself to do something different and being creative, being creative, honoring your creativity. Let's draw a final card for you. <clears throat> this is Art Oracles. So for you, we have Salvador Dali. Never make an appearance without controversy. Tap the unconscious and pray it isn't boring. Being Dolly is inspiration enough. Tap the unconscious and pray it isn't boring. Yeah, you need to tap in to your subconscious, I would say, not unconscious, subconscious. Um, play, have fun, become enchanted again with your work, with the whole creative process. But as you grow as an artist and you want to make it into a business, remember to be discerning, get advice or learn something new if you feel that's necessary and be persistent and you will overcome obstacles. All right. Don't forget to see things from different perspectives. Don't remain stagnant or stubborn or stuck in any one thing or with any one idea. Okay. Be malleable, be malleable like a piece of clay. All right. There you go. Bye. Hello, group three. How are you? If you drew or chose the third card, this is your reading. So your first tarot card is justice. Balancing of the scales. It's the sign of Libra. Also, it means contracts. What type of contract? Maybe it's a business contract, a contract with someone who's going to sponsor you or your work or support or finance you and your work. That's pretty exciting. Let's see what else we get with some more tarot cards. Group three. So I feel that that's probably 
about a contract, about making your creativity a business or a side thing. Could be a contract with yourself, kind of vowing to finish something by a certain date or to create so many products or projects per month. Let's see what else we get for you, group three. We have the hanged man, I love this, yes. Um, shifting perspective, seeing things from a different point of view. We also have for you the five of cups. There's a little bit of a loss or letting go of something. Two are still standing, three are down, two are still standing. You might wanna try not Try to not focus on the ones that are spilled like this character. You wanna focus on the ones that are still standing, right? Next, we have the Five of Swords. This is defeat, but in this case, you are probably the conqueror here. And we have the Prince of Cups, which is likened to the Knight of Cups. It's um, someone coming forward with some good emotional news someone giving you or bringing forth a proposition for you. It could be a business proposition. Um, someone offering to support you or partner up with you. But essentially, yeah, your main message here is some contractual agreement coming for you, group three. Now, like with any type of contractual agreement with a company or a financial institution or what have you, you know, there's, there's the, the items that, or the areas that stay as you want them to stay. And sometimes you lose little battles, but you win the war. That's kind of what I'm getting for you, group three. You're, maybe you've lost a few battles with this type of agreement or contract, but you've won the war and you need to remember that. This has either happened or this is going to happen in the near future, right? You have to remember that you've won the war. That's why we have this warrior up here next to remind you of the two very important cups that are still standing, right? So that your um, integrity or the integrity of your art, whatever it might be, music, theater, literature, uh, crochet, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, you are keeping the integrity of what you're doing. Okay, they might want you to change the size of the product or project. They might want you to add something or take something away, but you need to remember that you've won the war and you are overall, I feel, keeping the integrity of the project, right? And if you just shift your perspective a little bit, you'll see that the little things that they might want you to change aren't really all that important. And it could very well be a very beneficial partnership is what I'm getting. Okay, so let's see what else we get for you with some Oracle cards, group three. Oops, I think I touched the camera, sorry. These cards are huge. Okay, I'm gonna take this top one. Let me just set the deck out of my way. So we also have for you, yeah, commitment. That's kind of validating what I was feeling with the Justice card and a contract, a commitment to this person, company, partner, whatever it is that's coming in for you. You are a creative genius. You've got what it takes to make it. And this is a contract or this is a contract that you will commit to in the long run but you do have to shift your perspective again and you'll realize that the changes that you have to make might not be that important because I feel like this partnership will be very beneficial for you group three so let's draw two of the creativity oracle cards this is such a great deck by Amy Zerner and Monty Farber each card has a different image on it they're all her tapestry art, and the words are written by um, her partner, Monty Farber. So let's draw two of these for you, group three. Okay, I'm almost done shuffling. I think one more little. Okay, 
So first for you, we have this image. Take a look at it. Maybe it's inspiring you in some way. Wish granted. Believe in your abilities as a magic maker to manifest your wishes. They will soon be your reality. There you go. You're getting validated here. Your wish is coming true that you will make it. You'll make it as an artist, whatever you're doing. Here's the second card from this deck. Take a look at the image. Maybe it inspires you in some way. The message here is perfectionism. Be content to know perfection as a distant utopian goal to which we journey but never arrive. So essentially, you're being asked to let go of the perfectionism. I know it can be hard, it can be tough, but you can do it, especially if you want to turn this into a sustaining, a financially stable type of business, right? With contracts, with um, agreements and commitments to others. Just occasionally you might want to let go of that perfectionism. All right, group three. So let's, without letting go of, of the integrity of what you're doing, obviously, right? So let's draw a color goddess casting card for you, group three. We'll have to pick that one. It almost flipped out. So put that over there. For you, we have sky. I love this card. Faith, flight, limitlessness. This is basically telling you that the sky is the limit. You have limitless potential, group three. Know that the possibilities are endless. You just need to have some faith. You need to take flight, take that risk, take that jump into the unknown or the scary, which might include a partnership or a contract. But once you start, there's no stopping you. There's no stopping you, group three. Let's draw a final card for you from Art Oracles and see what we get for you, group three. A lot of that light blue coming through, that might mean something to you, so keep that in mind, that sky blue popping through on a few of the cards I noticed. And for you, we have Rem Kulhas. Breathing is secondary. Don't forget to think. A good manifesto is foremost legible. Reconsider your concept of small versus big. There you go, group three. Reconsider your concept of small versus big. Don't forget to think. Think carefully um, while letting go of the perfectionism. Don't be afraid to commit to a contract if you feel intuitively that will work for you and that will help to manifest your goals. All right, group three, thanks, bye. Okay, so you came back at the end here. We're gonna do a, kind of a collective reading. It's more maybe going to give you messages that you might not have gotten in the last um, segment of the video, the pick a card segment. I'm just going to let you know what I get and something for you might pop through with some of the cards I'm drawing here for this bonus reading. All right, so we have Knight of Swords. We have Four of Pentacles. We have Six of Wands. We have the Ten of Wands. And we have the Seven of swords all right so let me take a look at these cards all right i would say this message is for some of you probably not all of you but you are well on your way to being esteemed for what you do okay you're well on your way it's going to take hard work but you need to remember that maybe money is not everything. Money does not determine your worth or your work's worth, okay? Does that make sense? That's kind of what you need to remember. Of course, you have to make a living. Um, if you are a true artist, you wanna to try to make a living with your art, right? So money is important. 
And someone once said that uh, the price of a piece of art determines its worth. I guess so, sort of, but not really to me. Not really to most of us who are true artists, I don't feel. So just because your art might be more or less expensive than others, it doesn't mean it's worth less. And I don't want you to focus on the money. Your guides, your muses, your muse guides don't want you to be obsessed with the money part of it, the dollar signs, all right? You're a hard worker, you've got what it takes. You're gonna be finishing things rather quickly and you have a lot of wisdom that you take with you to every project, whether it's a musical composition or an, an art composition or whatever. You've got a lot of wisdom. Doesn't matter how old you are either because you can attain wisdom from past lives, right? You could have been an artist of some kind in a past life. So I'm gonna draw from a different tarot deck and see what else I get. We have the lovers. We have Ten of Cups. We have the Chariot. And we have the World. Gosh, what fantastic cards. Fantastic. This is all about partnership and joy and love. And what I'm getting is that there is a very beneficial partnership coming your way that will last possibly the rest of your life. It could be a business partnership, it could be a romantic partnership, it could be both of those found in one person. Very interesting, but that's kind of what I'm getting there. But that person, that partnership is going to help manifest what you want. It's going to get your, your abilities or your stuff, your items, your creative projects it's going to get them seen, and I'm hearing the word worldwide, like world-renowned, right? World-renowned, worldwide. Also, there's traveling involved, traveling involved. Let's see what I get from the Creativity Oracle. Any more messages anyone needs to know? Let's see what we get with this deck. Okay, so. We have this image first. Manifestation. Soon you may manifest the goal you focus spiritual energies upon. Manifestation. I love that. And we'll draw a color goddess casting card. So manifestation, I feel, is for all of you, whoever's watching this. As will be this card, because I'm just drawing one. We have brown, earth, foundation, and seeds. It's all about laying down the foundation of what you want to build, what you want to do with your creativity for the future. So in order to manifest it, those goals, you need to first plant that seed or start that thing, all right? Many of you have hesitated doing this, doubts, fears, thinking, oh, it's just a pipe dream. I can't make that work. I can't make money doing that. Well, I'm telling you, you can. Most of you probably can. Let's draw an art oracle as a final message for you. Okay. So we have Paul Gauguin. Go far to go far. Exaggerate the subtle, share the unseen. Only an outsider sees inward. Don't be afraid to be an outsider, okay? Don't be afraid um, that your view, your creative view or project or whatever you do, don't be afraid that it's going to be judged harshly. I mean, who cares if it is? If it's different, it's brilliant. Difference is, different is good. Unusual is good. And art is completely subjective, all art. I don't care if you're talking about literature or painting or theater or music, it's all subjective. So have confidence in yourself, all right? Plant the seed, start the thing, and manifest it.
Hello, hold on. I wanted to pop in before I wrapped up this video reading and let you know that the second edition of my Color Goddess casting cards will be coming out very soon, early 2022. So pre-sale will be available soon. Now, these are the first edition. The second edition will be matte and it will have a different type of gilding on it. But other than that, it's very, very similar. There are some slight changes in the font and the, the darkness and the colors, just very slightly. But if you are into color and goddess energy and flowers and gemstones, symbols, keywords, each card contains the color, obviously, keywords, a gemstone, flowers, and some incorporate zodiac signs and, and chakras as well. So it's kind of a, a multitude of things all wrapped up into one deck. I've gotten rave reviews on Etsy. It is self-published. So follow me on Instagram and Facebook for the pre-order information about my new deck, the second edition coming out early 2022. All of that information will be below. Thanks so much. Bye.